Hi, Greg from Curry Country Living and welcome. In this episode, we're gonna be um, showing you a farm video that I shot last year. And I absolutely love doing farm videos, especially the harvest videos. And I'd like to thank the uh, Saunders family from North of Manitou, the Daniel F Saunders family for allowing me to show this because, uh, because basically when I do these videos, a lot of times it's just the uh, taking the drone out taking some aerial video shots, putting some music to it and, and uh, editing that way. And those make great little keepsakes. This one uh, started off that way, but then it got uh, a whole lot more involved as we started doing different crops. So I ended up going out about three or four times with the drone and all the camera equipment and, and doing some major editing. We ended up with over two hours of edited video. And so what you're about to see is a uh, 50 minutes of that when, uh, when they're doing some straight cutting in the beans. And I get to talk to Daniel and his daughter, Leah. Uh, we talked to everybody on the farm in different videos, but that's what this one is on. Uh, this video is being sponsored by Curry Country Living Airbnb. In the background here, we finally got this barn up and going and it's on Airbnb. If you need to see more information, check out our website uh, below. And uh, yeah, I hope you enjoy this video. I just love making them. Uh, would love to make some for you. So if you need more information, give me a shout below. As always, if you like the video, consider giving me a thumbs up, subscribing to the Curry Country YouTube channel, or leaving some comments at the uh, comment section. I always love seeing the comments. Where are you farming? What part of the world? What's harvest like for you? Enjoy. He actually seeded this, not this, theft of this side. The other side was seeded by him. We had, we had bought an avatar this spring and I had made a deal with him that I need, I need a demo tractor and I need a guy driving it for the deal. So he seeded, he seeded the other side and then he had to go. So he, I, got, I said, well, Steph's got to seed. So he showed Steph how to do it and Steph was seeding. She, she did all this side, all the last, say, so 400 acres. I'm gonna, I'm gonna uh, show my acres, but an avatar. What, what? Avatar is a drill. Okay. It's just a, almost like a, like a zero tail drill almost. You go direct in. That's all. That, that's the name of a drill. Is all it was. Okay. Horsch built it. The company Horsch. This is Leah. Yeah. yeah. Leah. Leah is green carding. Steph's in the combine. I'm in the combine, and Dylan's trucking. And Grandpa's out tarrowing. Oh, you know what? He was across where we were combining before, wasn't he? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So. We're going to kind of go through a lot of the same stuff that we did before. That's okay. We, we have a, it, was, it was a test run. It was a test run. Uh, so tell me, tell me about the crop we're in right now. We're in yeah. soybeans. Uh, they're y forest. They're for seed. Mm -hmm. These are for seed. They're definitely dry, but we're, they're yielding uh, mid-50s. Doing okay. pretty good, actually. Surprising. So that for this year? That's oh, yeah. The beans yeah. are doing good. Beans okay. are a good crop. Better than canola. 
and, and cracks is always an issue. So can we're you... okay. A company, we have a set property here. We have very little cracks. Okay. And these were sown probably late? May 20, I think 26th, 27th. And today is uh, the last day of September, yeah. September 30th. So. They're dry. They probably were ready a couple days ago, but. And I think Dylan was telling me that um, you need to do, you had to do some you had to do some canola in between in between yeah we did some other variety yesterday and then we did honey because of canola yeah after that to clean the combines out a bit plus we were there and then we thought oh, let's do the beans today get them done yeah before they get too too dry we did 380 380 acres yesterday yeah just gonna get a shot of the, the gopro will pick it up real good but i've got i got a lot of great air footage like just it was phenomenal. A, nice, a nice day and over there you probably saw two other combines going over across yes. the road yeah that's morrison roger Oh, okay. They have they have Colossus combines too. There's a one year old, two, a couple years older, but they bought new ones for next year. And then over there is Zilkies. I'm sorry. Oh yeah, Perry and yeah, uh, yeah. Carson and Cameron, Carson. and they have they also have Colossus combines or is it Lexions. So, so there's six Lexions going within here within a mile. <laughs> well, you know what? And on my way up, does Jim Friesen have? Jim, yep, they have two. Uh, Danny Weave has two. Jim has two. So I can ask you this because I'm, I, I have no affiliation, but uh, John Deere is kind of getting their butts kicked here a little bit? Or? They're losing ground a bit, yes. They're going to either have to... Uh, well, the X9s help. They finally got a new one. They're a good combine, but Claus is taking up some real estate. Yeah. 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 Because they, they're they a good combine. I mean, tough conditions, they do really well. And even on dry, I mean, they do, they do a decent job. Yeah. They're, Claus is built for small grain. John Deere and, and, and Case are built for corn and soybeans because they're built for the States. Claus is built in Germany, which they grow a lot of more small grains. This, yeah. is like, this, is, this, is, this is not as small as soybeans, but canola, wheat are all small grains and barley and oats. And that's why these combines shine better in that than, than for, for example, maybe the, the Case and the John Deere because they're made for it. So can you can you tell me about this particular combine run? I think you told me it was mid-range. It's not the Yeah, place, it's mid-range. It's mid-range. Yeah. So, and I think you were doing, last time we talked, you we were doing about 13 acres an hour. Yeah, right now we're at 20. We're at 21. So, so between the two, you 40, 40. 42 acres an hour right now. We started here at, I think it was 8.30, 9 o'clock, and we've got 200 acres done. I couldn't do that with a 45-bit arrow when I was... <laughs> <laughs> and this is 40 feet. Like, we're, we're moving. Yeah. We're doing 4.4 mile an hour. Uh, the wind is working uh, well. Yeah, working nice now. Yeah. Uh, tell me about the farm site because I got some great shots of the farm site. So let's start with yours. Please. Mine, we well, we had bought that back in, or Dad, or all of us bought that back in 1990, I think it was. Yeah. And then we moved in there in '92, Michelle and I. Okay. The fall night after we got married, '92, we moved in, and I've been there ever since. We've changed it a lot. Mm -hmm. I should give you a picture of the original, what it looked like. Actually, if you want to email that or. I, it's on like, my phone, too. Yeah. It's, yeah. You, it, you, you, don't, you wouldn't recognize it. So whose farm did it use to Gerald be? Coleman. Gerald and Irene Coleman. Irene's still alive. Gerald passed away a few years back. Okay. Irene is still alive. And uh, Dylan's farm? The home farm there. Uh, Grandpa moved there in 1947, or came from Belgium, I should say, Yeah. with eight kids. And two more over here then. Uh, and then Dad got that in the 60s, late 60s, and then I, I grew up there. And then now my son Dylan lives there. Yeah. Um, and I got a perfect timing on that with him going in. I oh, am yeah. so far behind Daniel. Like, He's got remotes in his pocket, moving augers back and forth. At the yeah, and, and the gate. Yeah. Yeah. It was phenomenal. And like the tarp I, too, automatically put the automatic tarp on. Yep. Yep. So. Yeah, technology. I yep. remember you asked me last time, what was the biggest change you've seen? Yes. What is the biggest change that you've seen? In technology. Yeah. So when That you, is my biggest change. When you started farming um, with, with, with your dad, um, I think you were talking like uh, international combines. Yep. Um, 1480 was my first one. 1480, which, you know, and we weren't growing beans back then, I don't think. No, right? we didn't grow beans now for the last 10, 11 years, so no, we were growing wheat and canola. Yeah. And oats, maybe a bit of barley. So go through some of this technology, because every time I walk, I, I get into one of these. Uh, GPS. Like GPS. Global, global positioning system is what it's called. You you set your line, and right now, there, we're on, we set our degree you want to be at, whatever you want, and you hit it, and you, you engage it every time you turn. Right now, both combines, this is the other combines doing it, we're, we're synced together. Like we're synced. So when I make a line, she loads that line up, she follows the line exactly. And I can see what she's yielding right now and where, where the moisture is. 
I can say that, that double combine's hers. That's her right there, combine one. Yeah. This is me here. And I noticed, um, I think you're doing this because of the grade card. It works for yes. you to, to split. And keep close together. That way, can bring my mile along here. That way, we can fit. So that's just a small, small detail about GPS being able to do yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. I ha yeah. You wouldn't be able to do it otherwise. No. Because I, I, I go, I go, you'll see it next time. I go right in the middle of the field, right? Like yeah. basically start a new line every time. You wouldn't do that otherwise. So the GPS is doing that? Like yeah, I just go over so many so many lines, engage, go. And I think the other thing we were talking about, Daniel, was the um, variable rate fertilizing and different yes. stuff like that. Yes, um, because of field view here, we map everything. So we know our spots have higher yield, lower yields. Of course, we know our fields a bit too, but there's always some on variables you don't know. And then with that, Dylan does a, a map, or we get soil test first. And after the soil test, we do a, a soil zones. And for fertilizer zones, where it's, it was richer or it could use a little bit more or a little less. And when he does a prescription, he makes a prescription that that zone one could have two gallons more than zone two. So it, he puts that into the computer, into this here, or is for his um, tremble for his fertilizer. It automatically changes as you go up and down the field. So you're trying to optimize um, the yield potential for yes, each section. Yes, exactly. Otherwise, some spots you over fertilize, and it's a, a poor spot, and you only get it's only topped out for yield. Yeah. And you keep putting more and more on, and there's extra fertilizer in the ground, which is a waste. Yeah. And some spots have too much because it goes flat. It's too much fertilizer. No. And, you, and if a crop goes flat too early, that's what happened to canola this year. Part of the reason, it hurts it. Your yield, your yield drops actually. Yeah. Tell me about the grain cart. Uh, it's a 2,000 bushel grain cart. We bought it a couple of years ago. Uh, it works great. It's a right hand unload, which most of them are not. What, so what's the uh, advantage, disadvantage? Uh, oops, that was, me. That, was, that was me. I wanted to get back to the back. Um, your controls are all on the right hand side of the tractor. So when you go against, against, against a truck to unload, you're, fit, you're sitting the same way. Otherwise you gotta go like this and look this way and work the controls. Yeah. See that I would not have picked up on something. A lot of people, are, a lot of uh, Del, uh, Elmers, make a right hand. More and more companies are starting to do that. Not everybody buys them, but auger. we always leave our auger in. I would I mean we always fold it. Some people leave their auger out. Then you can't you can't do that with the right hand. Uh, no. Um, okay, so I, I uh, tell me about. Okay, we got you in this combine here. Yeah. And who do we have ahead of us? Stephanie. So that is my daughter. Your daughter, your second, my, my my oldest daughter. Okay. And the youngest daughter is, is green carding. In the green card, and drawn green is my oldest son. And and you've got your dad. He's out heroin right now. Yeah. <laughs> he wanted to go heroin, so. Um, and I don't think Stephanie talked to her last. Time. I don't think she minds driving the bomb. Oh no, she likes it. Yeah. yeah. She drove the. She also drives a green card too. They, yeah. they take turns. And then Sean comes home from work. He takes over the green card. No, that's uh, so. It's, you have like a real family operation. Yep. Yeah. 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 Uh, everybody, everybody pitches in. Everybody. Yeah. Mom used to combine. Like my mom did a lot of combining years ago. She retired now. To, it's about three years ago. She doesn't do it anymore. But she used to do a lot of combining. Yeah. Where do you see um, this technology going? Like what, what what's next? Like, well, it's already there. We don't have it in ours. We, we it, it's an update. It would cost twenty grand to put in each combine. It would automatically change all your settings in here. To, to make the best best job possible of thrashing and not throwing as much as this and that. It, it, it automatically changes your combine as you're going on the field. So we're talking cylinder speeds, everything, sieve openings, Sieves, everything. wind. Yeah. And so it, it can you, do that now. They have that already out there now. So right now you manually just kind of set Yeah, this. we just watch it ourselves. Okay. I never bothered yet. It's really good for people who don't know the machine. Let's say I threw you in here. Yep. And you don't know the machine at all, this and that. Nope. Don't worry about it. It'll change itself if I have it set that way. You, you, always, like right now, staff doesn't know either, but I, I'm, I'm out here, so I play, I'm play. i constantly playing with it. Like today, it's pretty good. But I'm, and I just change it and I phone her, change this, change that. Okay. Like right, I can hit this thing here and she hit that page, you change it, so I close it, hit this, another page, I can change that, and it's all touch screen. And it's like, a, it's, it, it's a computer. Where um, so right now the combine like right now you're not you're not steering at all. It's all no, I have right yeah. yeah, I haven't touched anything and and cruise control. I have cruise control right now. I, I'm going. I don't want to go any faster than 4.4 mile an hour because if we go too fast, it can't cut it. Soybeans are hard to cut. 
Okay. So we figured 4.4 right now. We can do it easy because we got because it's dry out. We can do it. We got it set for 4.4, and I got the set also here. This one at 90 percent. So if it goes over 90 percent, it slows you down. Automatic. Automatic. That, that, that that's your percent load so of the combine. Right, right I'm now, at 50, I'm seeing 50. 50. I got lots of room extra. Yeah. But at times it goes to 85, 90, gets a heavier spot, it'll slow the combine down automatically. Well, how do you how do you fix all this stuff? Like, like if something goes wrong, you phone. <laughs> That's the problem. That is the big problem. Can they fix stuff? Oh over, yeah, computer. Over? Uh, no, they have to come out and they have to come computer and hook yeah. it up and okay. yeah, most times it's that way. This I can do over the phone. GPS I can call somebody a lot of times. Yeah. Uh, where's the uh, uh, where's the dealership for Morton? Morton. Yeah. That noise you hear is just the scraping of the all kinds of little scrapers. If we left it, because I'm on flex, I'm on flex mode, and I'll explain that in a second here once I'm done turning. With soybeans, oh, I went too late. I went too late. There we go. When with soybeans, you got to put on flex mode, and what that means is your header is right on the ground and it, it'll follow the, 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 the topographical lay of the land. If you have a little dip, it'll, the, the header can flex in three spots, this one. Some headers can flex completely, but it can move like this so on its this, own. Is this a different header than you would use for straight cutting wheat? Or no, your same one. Same we, just, one. We, we take the flex off. You have, uh, two little levers you flip off and then, then it's back to, to, to rigid. Okay. So you just use the flex for? The soybeans and peas. Because you gotta you gotta shave the ground because the pods are so low to the ground. So do they use P lifters still? Yeah, we didn't bother. No, like with the flex header. Yeah, it's yeah. great. You, as long as you roll the ground. Yeah. One thing bad about now is our canola. Of course, it all went down. It's all because of because of disease or whatever in it. It's about this high off the ground, so you gotta shave the ground. Yeah. So you can pick up stones. And how do the stone traps work in these? Stone works good, but I did pick a stone up the other day and I had to fix something. Okay. It broke a belt, so I had to fix it. Yeah. I was down for four hours, two days ago. And I know I talked to uh, Stephanie there uh, a couple of weeks ago when we were in the wheat, and uh, she does some stone picking, she said. Yeah, not and a lot with a stone picker, but we usually pick stones by hand. That's what she said. After and, seeding. And that surprised me. Why? Because like, what, like, what you get the small ones like this. Gotcha. We built a little trailer. We do a, do a two machine. We have, we have a Rhino, and then we have our four-wheeler with a trailer we built behind. The trailer we built, I'll show you a picture then. It's like a rock truck trailer, but it has automatic, it has a hydraulic, it's, it's sitting in the yard. I yeah. got a shot of it. Yeah. yeah. It has a hydraulic pump on it. It goes up on its own, dumps, and. You built that? Yeah. We built that. Um, I actually, it actually looks like I'm not shitting you. Like, it looks like it's custom made. Yeah. It looks like it's, yeah. yeah. It works really good. Yeah. To buy one like that, we, if you wanted to sell them, they'd be nine, ten thousand bucks. Holy crap. Because there's a lot of money invested in that thing. So that's what you use for stone picking? Stone, stone picking, stone yep. Yeah. And then in the yard, now, even if, uh, in the seed plant, we have like, some spillages of, of, of peas or grain on the ground. Throw it in there go to the auger, dump it in. It's like dumping a truck. It's a handy little unit. Oh, unbelievable. Yeah. Um, what kind of um, fertilizer and chemicals do you use on, on these soybeans? These are no soybeans. Idea. On yeah. these soybeans, we use Roundup. We didn't spray, you see the odd canola here, because right here, they're a little bit poorer, it came up later. It could be, it could be Roundup ready canola, Yeah. the odd plant. And of course it's Roundup ready beans, they're not dead. Right. But we, for the amount there only was, we said, you know what, it's not worth spraying, because it costs 18 bucks an acre. There's a little more here. We could have sprayed a little spot, but we didn't know they were here. But we, 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 we saved 18 bucks an acre. And, it, and uh, you don't need to put much fertilizer on soybeans at all? No, nothing. Nothing. Just a bit of phosphate and that's it. Because yeah. uh, they make their own nitrogen. Yes. Uh, micronutrients? Like, do you use sulfur in some of these? No. Nothing. So and when, you would, when you're, like, I know that like, um, we're similar ages. I know you just had a birthday a little while ago. Two days ago. Birthday. Yeah. But we're within five years of each other. But your dad is 83. 83, yes. And did he ever farm with horses? I, I not him directly. I know maybe his family did. Yeah. But not him. Probably in the 40, 40 came in 47. Maybe after that they did. But I know he used to go to school. They had school used to be the home yards right there. Yeah. Three quarters of a mile north is where the school was. Is there a camp? The country school. There's actually a thing there. Yes. Okay. And it's called Midland. Yes. Midland School. Yeah. The New Haven is yeah. over here. Yeah. So that's why my name and my corporation is called Midhaven, because I couldn't use Midland and I couldn't use New Haven because they're already registered the names. So I went a bit of both. So I went Midhaven. Yeah. That's why I'm called Midhaven Farms. Interesting. I noticed that on your sign when I took when I took a picture. Because I wanted 
just, I just I think of a name and I thought, well, Midland School, New Haven area, district, New Haven School's over here. I bet you once you thought of it, it just fit perfect. It did. I like it. Yep. Yeah. It's all uh, one word, so. Yeah. Um, why did your dad immigrate? Immig- immigrate? Grandpa left Belgium right after the World War. World, World War, War II. II. And he, he came from a family of 13. He had eight kids, and Grandma had already been out in Canada. She was she had been she had born in Belgium, but she came to Canada many many years earlier, and had gone back to Belgium. And they knew there was chance to expand here. Yep. Out there, there was nothing. It was Belgium was destroyed pretty good by 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 the war, and expansion was tough to do. And he knew that. He knew out he came out here, there'd be room for his kids to grow, and maybe succeed. Yep. He thought he'd either here or the. Nepal Valley in California. That's the two places he had thought of going, but the reason they came here, Grandma wanted to come here, she had family already here at, at, at Bruxelles. So the winter didn't deter them? No. So Probably did after they were here, but <laughs> <laughs> to be honest, maybe it did, but Grandma already knew what the winters were like because he sure he had been here. Yeah. So they already knew. And then, like I said, there was family here already. Because my, my grandma was a Devlo, so the Devlos were already here. So is that uh, like Mark DeVlo? Mark DeVlo is yeah. my cousin, second or third cousin. Jerry oh. DeVlo is dad's first cousin. Yeah. And then George DeVlo, George and Albert, their their dad and grandma are brothers. Jerry Jerry, Jerry DeVlo's dad, which is Mark's, Mark's grandpa, are brothers. Okay. And our brother to grandma. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. That, that's, how, that's how they came out here. So right now you, you've got um, like physically farming with you uh, is Daniel. Dylan. Or, see, I keep doing that. Sorry, Daniel. <laughs> and don't, I'm not even going to apologize because I keep calling my own kids the wrong names. <laughs> that's why we numbered ours. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm not kidding. We, when we were younger, we were playing baseball and we had four boys. And we'd go, I, 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 I had to go somewhere. So I, I told Michelle, I'll take two and four, you take one and three. <laughs> and it was way easier than saying all their names. So Sharon, Sharon Hackle, Sharon, you always say Sharon Schultz. We would heard about this and we were doing this. So she got baseball jerseys made and we have them at home. I have a picture I'll show you if you want. Of Sanders 1, Sanders 2, Sanders 3, Sanders 4. And, they're all the, and, and we, we framed them and that's how we used to number our kids. We still number them. Perfect. Perfect. Like, it's, it's, it's crazy. Yep. It's, yep. Just, it's a lot faster to say, like back then, I'll take 2 and 4, you have 1 and 3. Like, it's just, rather than all the names, you get the names always wrong. Well, the, go through them all before you get the right one. Yep. I mean, you know what that's like. Yeah. So Dylan, so Dylan's uh, actively farming with yeah. you, and the and the girls. Uh, Leah works in town, and Steph is off on helping. Okay. She helps quite a bit. Yeah. Does a lot of the books now, and helping on the farm here a bit. And yeah. So what I want to get her to do this fall is I want to, I have to go around with her this year, but I want her to go to farms and try and promote our our stuff we have to sell, our seeds. So I, we we're trying to do it last spring. We didn't have time, but this year I want to do it. So, uh, I want her to be a salesperson. Yeah. Uh, well, talking about that, I know you've been on the, uh, is it Seek? Yeah, Manitoba Seek Growers. Manitoba Seek for 14 years? Yeah. It's 14th yeah. year coming, yeah. What's involved with that? Uh, you got meetings three or three or three or four times a year. You're just representing all the other growers in Manitoba. Yeah. And you have feedback with the Canyon Seed Growers, which is a Canada-wide one. Like you're a branch off it. And you just keep in contact with them with the new changes and policies and... Yeah. I really enjoy it. I got to meet a lot of new people, new seed growers and all across the country and make make acquaintances, even make some deals because of it. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes not what you know but who you know. Exactly. Yeah. And you get you get you get yourself known a bit, right? Yeah. Um, just switching gears and going back to Europe again, that you've been involved with the uh, Manito- uh, Manitou uh, Travel Club for quite a few years. Mm-hmm. Did you ever get a chance to visit any home territory that your parents came from? We actually, one trip, we were in, we went, we were, went through Amsterdam to go to France, we had to go through Belgium. So we stopped in, in, uh, in Brussels. Okay. In, in Bru- no, in Bruges, Bruges, uh, Bruges in, in French, in Flemish, I mean. So we weren't very far from where dad grew up. It wasn't Brussels, it was Bruges, which is the northwest side of Belgium, which is, which is the Flemish area. Okay. We were about an hour from, I don't speak Flemish. No. <laughs> okay. Klinabetje, which is a little bit, very little. Well, a lot of the swear words or the bad words I heard them as a kid growing up. Yeah. Do you uh, do you have relatives over there still? Oh yeah, lots. Yeah. Both sides. And, and Mom's side and dad's side. A little bit of contact or? Uh, no, they, no, they come here once. I don't know any of them. Yeah. I'm a purebred Belgium. Yeah. Both sides. You go way back, it's Belgium all the way for me. 
Not so, my kids no more, but me, I'm Belgium all the way. Right, so what's Michelle's uh, genealogy? I think she's England, English, well, Scotland, England. Yeah, maybe United, Wales. United Kingdom, I think. Yeah. yeah. So, and how did you meet Michelle? I met her at David's wedding, my twin brother's wedding. And what was the first impression that you just happened to see? This well, person? she saw me first, I guess. Um, she heard, She went to school with David's wife, Tracy, in childcare. Took the same thing in Brandon. And the one day I'm sitting, it was in February, I'm sitting on the couch. I didn't play this last time. Sitting on the couch. And they were going to go to a bridal shower. So, at the Dave and Tracy's place. So, she came to the door. And all I remember seeing is her hair. Out, like, out wide. Standing there. And she saw me. And she, and she didn't, she asked her, who's that? It's down in that questions. And I left that be. Never said a word until May. And we had a social for David in Brandon. So, she had the social. We kind of hit it off, Michelle and I, a bit. And I left the bee again. Because I knew I didn't want to bother with anybody. For the wedding, I said, I'm not, not worrying about it. I don't, I don't want to be that extra hassle. That's alone. Then she was at the wedding. She had a boyfriend. She broke up the day before, or a week before, whatever it was. Came to the wedding, and um, then we hooked up. <laughs> and six months later, we were engaged. Then nine months after that, we were married. Whirlwind. No. Um, so has the biggest problem been the blue bomber in Saskatchewan? Oh yeah, she's gone right now to, <laughs> to the game. She got. She had extra tickets. We were. Some of us were going to go to that game. Like Steph was one of the go. I said, I'm not going. I'll be in the field. Steph was going to go, but she couldn't. Leah was going to go, but she couldn't. So she had extra tickets. So she had some of her friends from Alameda, where she's from, in Southeast Saskatchewan, have gone to the game right now. She's a Saskatchewan fan. I have a couple of kids that are Saskatchewan fans too. Well, I'm sure they've been because uh, I'm Manitoba. I'm Blue Bomber. I don't I'm even Bomber follow too. Football. I just but not all my kids are though. Some yeah. of them are not. Yeah. So I'm a Hab fan. I really screwed up there with some of my kids. My oldest, Dylan, is a Colorado. Sean is Toronto, which I majorly screwed up. <laughs> I don't know why he's Toronto. Uh, Nathan is Edmonton. Another one. I just uh, Back in the Smite Division days, I'm a big fan of Edmonton. Justin's Minnesota because we went to Minnesota to watch a couple games when he was younger and he, he fell in love with them. Stephanie, I got one brain washed in Montreal and Liga doesn't care. Well, you know, to me, that just tells me you got kids that like to think on their own. Yep. And I actually say it's, it's cool. They're all different. Yeah. All different. Sean, I don't know where I went wrong with Toronto, though. That one, I have no idea. Well, he must be uh, he must be one of those guys that figures that there's hope for everything. So. <laughs> like I tell them, they'll ne they've never won a Stanley Cup in my lifetime because the 67 is their last one. Just I'm born in 68. And I'm saying they'll never win one in my lifetime. And they won't. I can't see it. I cannot see him win. So what? Yeah, we can talk about that all the time. We're supposed to be talking about farming. I know, but it's more fun if we don't. <laughs> Um, so you're going to be done the beans, I think, today or tomorrow? Uh, tomorrow. We have 510 acres to do, so we'll be done probably 400 today. Yep. We'll finish it tomorrow, and then we'll do some canola. Um, uh, these are these are quads, I think you were telling me. Like you've got tracks on these? And, and yes, they're they're tracks. Okay. Yeah. And uh, the advantages of that? Uh, soil compaction. Like right now, there's with tires, you, you, you do compact more per square inch on the ground than you do tire, tracks. And when it gets wet. If you get to wet years, like a 19, you start sinking tires, you'll get stuck possibly. Tracks, you can go through a heck of a lot more. And we have rear wheel assist also yes. on them. So if you go through mud, you get rear wheel assist, it helps you to turn better and push through the mud. And, and it does, it works. Well, I know you have the tracks on the tractor and yeah. the, the Yeah, we have tracks on a lot of stuff. Like I, was, I feel like I told you last time, there was a field out there and about a half a mile that, mile that way. And... Um, Uncle Michelle was still alive and they were farming it. There's 30 acres of corner that was all underwater, like yeah. wet, wet, wet. They tried combining with rice tires, duels, and they were getting stocks. They left that corner. It was Sunday, Sunday evening. They said, well, I'll come combine it. So I had to combine the yard here. So I drove out of the yard to their place. It was there in five minutes. Started combining. I had tracks. Up and down the field they went. And he was shocked at what I could go through. I got it all. No problem. No, that's great. Um, I don't know. So you're going to have to introduce yourself. I'm Leah, I'm the youngest sibling. And your dad was just telling me he numbered you all, so you would be number? Number six. You're number six. You're yep. Saunders six. Yep, they ended with the perfect child. <laughs> <laughs> what are we doing today, Leah? Our green curtain for soybeans. And so far, so good? Yep, so far, so good. Haven't had any spills yet, so I can't complain. As long as I don't mess up, I'm happy. <laughs> I won't talk while you're doing this. The sun's getting worse though, so I can't see as much. So when you're 
not green carding, what do you do? I was working at Access Credit Union for a little bit, and now I'm not sure what's next. I might go back to school. Okay. But Any idea what you'd like to do in school? I have no clue, honestly. I'm thinking about graphic design or speech pathology. Two different things. That's a pretty <laughs> wide spectrum. Yeah, and I started in accounting, so it's a lot different. <laughs> Become second nature. So, <laughs> first couple dumps of the year are always ner are always nerve wracking. But I gotta fix the signal, so you're gonna have to. Uh, I don't know where we're gonna be able to be apart from each other now. Her like mom's pretty artistic. She likes to like she's crafty. Yeah. She's very, she was really into scrapbooking at one point, and then. So with the daycare when she worked there, we always made stuff for that place. And then, I don't know, I just have always loved either painting, not as much of a drawing person, because my drawing is terrible. Unless it's on the computer, then I can do it from shapes and stuff. But So if you were to take uh, graphic design, you take it from Alberta? I'm not sure. Okay. I kind of wanted to go to Alberta for a little bit, just move away and see see what life has to offer. Yeah. I've always wanted to travel, so. Well, that must be like, I know you've gone to Europe, I'm guessing, with, yes. uh, with your dad. Yep. And yeah. has your mom ever been here? Yes, she has a couple times. She's went on, well, she didn't go with the kids at all. She went with the parents travel club once, I believe, and then she's went on a couple combine trips over there. Okay. Yeah. Um, so, farming as a family, like who, who, do you, who, who stresses the most? Who's the, who's the most carefree? Who's the, tell me about family farming with your family. Um, I would say dad and grandpa stress the most. <laughs> Could get, getting it done. And Dylan's carefree. He doesn't seem like anything bothers him. Where Steph and I just kind of, Steph and I go with the flow. So we stay out of the way unless we're needed. <laughs> uh, uh, what about your mom? Mom's a little stressful because she's always stressed about like what foods to bring out. And even like when she was gone for a little bit, she's like, "What did you feed while I was gone?" So I don't feed it again. <laughs> but and uh, are you a bomber fan or a Saskatchewan fan? Rider fan. Oh, gosh. I was heartbroken when I couldn't go to the game today. Um, yeah, because I know your your dad was just saying that Michelle went. So. Yeah, she got had some friends come out from Saskatchewan. And what all of her girls from out there? Yeah. Um, what can you tell me about the green cart? And I don't know whether. Oh, I could, I don't know much, okay, honestly. Okay. I just kind of know where I need, like the buttons I need and the iPad. Okay. <laughs> and What's the iPad do? It's the scale for on the green card. The green card? Yeah, so it tells us how much is on. And then, so right now we have almost 500 on, and then we dump it about, into the semi at about 1,200. Okay. Yeah. So you'll pick up another round when they're coming back here? And, yeah. Yeah. Um... I'm trying to think of the questions I asked Steph. When, um, so do you still live at home then, or do you? I don't. I live in town now. Okay. With my boyfriend, so I live just by the arena. Who's your boyfriend? Colton Bamford. Oh, I know Colton. Yeah. 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 So I just live there, like in Ray's old house, because he's moved to the city. Yeah. Colton but. works for uh, Next Gen, I believe. Yes. Yes. It's been there for eight years, I believe. It's been a while. Yeah. Hasn't it? Yeah. yeah. Because I think his dad has moved into... He's moved in with his wife in Winnipeg. In Winnipeg, right. Yeah. Like he retired when he sold red. So. Yes. Yeah. Um, so when you're not farming, you were doing some accounting. You're thinking of going back to school. Um, the book hasn't been written yet. You've got all your options open. Yeah, I also want to travel, so I have no clue what I want to do. Uh, egg exchange traveling. I could. I did think about that. Yeah. But I did think about Australia, but I'm terrified of spiders. So I would not be able to handle it over there. New Zealand. I could go to New Zealand. They don't have anything that will kill you over in New Zealand. 
<laughs> yeah, but if I see them, I'm still going to be terrified. <laughs> the tiniest spider, I will scream and get someone else to kill it. Um, mm. How did you learn how to drive some of this equipment? Did they just throw you on and say, go for, go for it? Or? Yeah, pretty much. I think it was, oh, might have been at least, I think I was grade 8 or grade 9. And they just threw Steph and I in here, showed us the, the spots to do it, and just said, go. But I was always sat in here when I was younger and just watched Sean or Dylan yeah. drive, and you kind of pick up on things. Yeah. Yeah, you kind of, you get thrown in usually pretty young. Well, yes, and that's uh, the, the first tractor, or yeah, the first tractor I drove was a 44 Massey, and all Dad told me was don't go up that hill with Yeah. So. Steph, I'll dump you closer to the end. I forgot Dad was stopped. So yeah. right, right now, you've got your grandpa over here right across the highway. Yep. You've got your dad uh, in the combine. Yes. And you've got you girls drawing green and combining and Dylan in the truck. In the truck. Yeah. Pretty well a full family affair. Yeah, we've had it one year where we had everyone in the field in our family across from, just across from our lane. We had every single kid, like, and both parents in there. We had Nathan in the combine, I believe, and Mum was sitting with him. I believe it was Dylan and Sean were trucking because we only we had two smaller trucks at the time. I think it was oh I couldn't even remember who was in here. I think it was Justin and I in here, and Steph and Dad in another combine. So that would have been eight of you. Yep. Yeah. There would have been eight of us in the field at a time. It gets a little hectic sometimes, <laughs> especially with all of us when we're all stressed. <laughs> So who's doing meals today if your mom's in Winnipeg? Justin's bringing us out food from Trappers. Oh, she right. planned it all out. She called Trappers this morning and gave him all the orders and then just told Justin he had to pick it up and pay for it. So I know you guys don't eat. Uh, you, you don't eat. You, like you eat, but everybody, you don't eat. Stop and eat. Nope. We just keep pushing on. Yeah. You eat when you have time. It might get cold, but you just keep yeah. going. Sometimes it's nice to stop. Like at lunch, I always... Usually I start in the morning, or if Steph starts in the morning, one of us will eat at home, and then we'll switch for the grain cart. And then once Grandpa wants to go harrow, we switch again, and it's just... Your, your Grandpa's doing phenomenal at 83 to be able to... Uh, when I jumped into the combine with him, and it, and it looked like the, uh, the deck of the Starship Enterprise, and he tells me he's 83 years old, and I'm like, wow. Yes, it, he's doing pretty good. Sometimes a little scary, because his eyes aren't get, aren't the best. Yeah. But it's... You learn to live with it, <laughs> and you learn that he starts the auger right away. You got to be right in the right spot. <laughs> so besides the brake cart, have you driven the combine or any of the other pieces of equipment? Yeah, I did a bit of combining this year. Um, I sometimes do combining. I usually don't like doing straight cutting. It's not my forte at all. You like the, the swap and the pickup? Yeah, I like pickup a lot more. And I think I've driven the semi once or twice, but it was just in the field of moving it. I don't, I don't like driving semis. And uh, so, what was your favorite piece of equipment to operate? The grain cart. The grain cart. Yeah, that'd be my favorite because I like it that you can get up and move. My body stiffens up way too quickly. I'm the youngest, but it stiffens up too quickly. <laughs> but. Do you have pets? I do. I have a hamster and a tur. Oh no, hamster and a cat. What, what's your hamster's name? His name's Rudy. Had him for almost a year now. And the cat gets along? Sometimes. <laughs> it's pulled the cage off a couple times from the spot that it was sitting and I've had to clean it up. The one day I was homesick from work and later, right as I was sitting in the living room, all of a sudden I just hear a smack <laughs> on the ground and I'm like, oh, there goes my hamster. <laughs> but it's usually not too bad. And we just got my cat. Someone dropped off uh, the cat at the end of the lane of Sean's and I took it in because I didn't want it to go anywhere bad. And I'm like, now I've, now I've got a cat. <laughs> I've always wanted one, either a cat or a dog. But. Well, I know Dylan's dog is fairly, uh, uh, just likes Dylan. Yeah, it, it started to get along with us a little more. It doesn't like people touching it because it's sore in all the places. But we all can touch it because we know where it's sore so we don't touch it in that place. And I noticed but, a uh, black dog in the yard. So was that Dylan's as well? That's Brayden's dog. Oh, okay. Yes. Yeah, he got that when he moved out here, was living with Justin and Sean. 
and then he moved to Dylan's. But I'm sorry, that's Braden. Be Braden Pyatt, like Teresa and Dwayne's. Oh, okay. Yes. He, and he works in town, or he works. He works with TJ Seward. Construction. Construction, yeah. yeah. And then he's starting up his own construction as well. Help me out here. He, uh, he's a curler. Yes. I've curled against him. Yes, he was the one who went to Russia and got the gold. Yes. yes. They kicked our ass <laughs> <laughs> at Pilot Mound. Yes, but they were a lot of fun to curl with. Yes, so they was, are fun. Yeah. That was with your aunt. Um, Probably Teresa and Dwayne, I'm guessing they were there. It was, well, it was his, his mom and dad and his girlfriend and him that were made up the curling team. So, yes. Yeah. Wow, there you go. So. Yeah, they, they're definitely a curling family. Yeah. <laughs> the only ones of the Sanders clan are dad siblings. Well, uh, I think, well, you guys, like, do you do sports? Like, you play baseball? I do. I play baseball. I am on the ladies team for Manitou, just the beer ball team. And then in high school, I think I was on the volleyball, baseball. I tried doing badminton, but it was interfering with other stuff. And then I was the bas boys basketball stats person. And then I did like the choir and the musical. Did everything you could do pretty yeah. much in high school. Was on student council, was on our We Day group. Well, I give your parents a lot of credit because I know how busy it can be when kids are involved in sports. Yes, so. it is very busy. Yeah. Luckily... I wasn't, when it was my time, it wasn't too busy. Everyone was out of high school, and it was just pretty much me, so. Yeah. What was your favorite sport? Ooh, that's a tough one. I would have to say softball. I liked the fast pitch with mm -hmm. Caldwell. I liked, I liked how he could be a little little rude and keep you going. Can you, um, are you still playing? Like, is your baseball still on? Uh, beer ball's not on anymore right now. Okay. But, yeah, we finished. The beginning of September usually. We don't usually get our last games in because most of our team has to do harvest. But so we usually have to forfeit the last two. But yeah, I usually play all all summer. I think it goes July and August usually. Okay. No, mm -hmm. I was just checking. I thought they were closer than that before. I didn't know if you did. No, dad had something broken and he had to fix it. Oh, okay. Yeah. So yeah. I kind of, because I was just asking him, I said, what do you do when these things break down? Because they seem to be all. Um uh, electronically uh, driven. Yeah, he actually, the other day, he ate a rock. And yes, he, he was saying that. That's, yes. yeah, I actually took a picture of it without him knowing because he was quite angry at the time. Well, let's see that picture. We'll maybe put that on the GoPro here. Let's see. Uh, oh, it is it there. So he oh. messed up. <laughs> yes. I, saw, I took a picture without him knowing. I kind of hit it because he gets a little angry when something goes wrong. Well... You know, like when you got, um, when your combining is good and you're trying to, yeah, so. Yeah, it's, it's good. Uh, but I sent it to grandma and I was like, uh, just don't say anything to dad. He's a little angry. <laughs> I called my mom. I'm like, cause she was just getting home from dropping her mom off in Saskatchewan back at her home. And I'm like, uh, don't say anything to dad. He's a little mad. The combine's wrecked. <laughs> but, Didn't put him down for very long? Uh, that happened at about three o'clock and he had to go all the way to Eli to get a part and then he so they got back around eight o'clock so oh, Steph and I the youngest two were running the farm we were in the field by ourselves but do you know what time the bombers and Scott and the riders play uh seven o'clock okay so they're, yes. not, they're not doing battle yet but nope not yet it's only any five any predictions last time I went and watched the riders lost so I'm not sure <laughs> I, I like to see them win <laughs> Um, well, I, I don't follow football that much. I just um, I just know there's a big rivalry between. But the Bombers have won the last two. Yeah, yeah. I don't I don't follow it too much. If I'm being honest, I just like to cheer for the Riders. Yeah. I like to pick at people because they don't like the Riders as much. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, if I, I would watch it, but it just doesn't interest me too much. And I sometimes have better things to do. So if I have nothing on, I can just watch a football game, play on my phone a little bit. Yeah. There's a nice big gap between these two now. It's makes it harder on the grain cart. Yeah, the one of them's gonna have to slow down a little bit. Steph's probably gonna have to slow down, and grand and uh, and dad is gonna have to probably stay his pace because he won't be able to speed up. No, I think he was telling me that everything's on uh, kind of like cruise control, and he's got his combine set so that when it hits ninety percent full, it would slow down. So yeah, but um, yeah, usually you can push it a little over a hundred. But they don't like to do that. <laughs> Sometimes I make them because I'm like I can't get there. Yeah. But 
So what does Colton do in the winter time? He doesn't work in the winter. He helps next, like it, like Brett, his boss, next gen, yep. a little bit throughout the winter. But he usually doesn't do too much. Saves up his money, sits at home. Yeah. But yeah, he plays uh, rednecks hockey too. Yes. So. Yes. Um, well, when his dad married Brenda. Uh, we went down to Mexico to videotape it, yes. so I've got some, you can tell him, you were talking to me today, mm -hmm. and ask him about the tequila shots. Oh, he's saying, told me about oh, the tequila <laughs> shots. <laughs> yeah, we had a whole conversation with Ray and Brenda about them. Yeah, him and uh, Ted, yep. I think. They had a hell of a great time, with it. and I think they might have been, I'm going to guess, maybe 16 at the time? Yeah, I've seen photos, and they look pretty young. Yeah, but, but uh, <laughs> no, they were having a lot of fun, that was great, that was a great trip, so... Mm -hmm. And everyone always looks so much younger now, too, like in those photos. So it seems like all the young kids have grown up way too fast. Yeah. But I still remember when I was probably 15, I was still wearing my bright sweaters and my colorful stuff, and now so kids what, are all dressed up. What year did you graduate? Uh, 2019. So you've been out for two years? Three, three years. years. Three years. So yes. you're, you're 21 this year? Yeah. 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 Yeah, I've been out of college for a year now as well. And what did so, you take in college again? Uh, business administration, okay. majoring in accounting. And you took that in Winnipeg or in Brandon? In Brandon, in Brandon? at ACC. Yeah. So, so you got to pick up your dad here, and then will you have to, will you have to dump um, that? Or I will have to take two more dumps before I empty. Okay. So I'll have to take dad and Steph both once more. I thought I turned my phone off. <laughs> <second. laughs> I always have my phone on during harvest, so anyone can call. Like last night I had a little break because Steph and I were both pretty exhausted last night and I'm allergic to dust so I needed out of the field. Are you allergic to dust? I am. It It's gotten better slowly and my asthma gets pretty bad like I have seasonal asthma so I have my inhaler with me all times. What uh, what crop is the worst? Like, I know that this is pretty dusty today. Probably wheat yeah. would be the worst. I usually keep the door closed as much as possible just to keep the dust out. The one time it got so bad, I told Dad I'm not shutting the machine off. And, yeah. <laughs> I was like... And, and do, um... Like, does, does your dad grow oats? I don't think... No. No. Not that I believe. So I think it's wheat, beans. Oh, it's we do, we do oats. You do oats? We do oats. Okay, I just am never in the grain garden oats. <laughs> no, no, because that's about as dusty as you can get. So. Yeah, I usually stay away at that time. It's a little too fast for me. I've done it once, I think, because everyone else was busy. And I kind of got thrown in there, but yeah. it's yeah. That one would have to be the worst then. I didn't even think about it. So I'm not used to doing them. I always try not to stall this thing, but I think I've done it about three or four times today. It's always hard because I never know if dad's filling the back or not. Because <laughs> if he's filling the back, he always tells me to stay one pace. But I just try not to spill. It's my main thing. Well, can he not? Can he not? He can move his auger back and forth a little bit, I think, right? A little bit, but they usually don't. Nope. They'll just slow down or speed up to move. Usually it's mostly on the grain cart to keep them in, in the middle and in the grain cart. Now we go back to the other end. <laughs> Mile fields are always a little harder because it's not like you sit in the middle of one place or at the end and dump them one.
thanks for watching. And if you like that video, please consider giving me a thumbs up, subscribing to their Curry Country YouTube channel. I also have a Curry Country Living Facebook page and Instagram account. Uh, check out all the links below. I really, really love the interaction in the comments. So if you're watching this somewhere and uh, you've got some comments on harvest or harvesting or the equipment that you're using, please leave them in the comment section below. I'd like to engage with that. So as always, stay safe and we'll catch you next time.